Hello everyone, Ryan here from iOS Mars. Uh, today I'm going to show you a little bit more into Cubasis. So I'll open Cubasis in my output slot of AudioBus here. So what I'm going to show you today is uh, basically I'm going to make a, some live MIDI loop recordings and then I'm going to send that MIDI to an input app in AudioBus and set, use AudioBus to send the audio back into Cubasis and record the result there. So you know this is going to be a lot like you would do on uh, your desktop DAW where you'd, uh, you'd load a VST inside your DAW, create a MIDI file to play that VST. So this is going to be the exact same thing but on iPad uh, it's, it's not quite as easy you know. We're going to have to set up some, some uh, different parameters for the MIDI to send everywhere. But uh, once you got this down this is just an excellent excellent way to make music on your iPad. So I'll start off with a new project here. MIDI send. And I'm going to alter my my beats per minute to about uh 100. And uh I'll make sure my count in is on. I like to have count in on. And I'll add a MIDI track. Now I'm just going to click this uh grand piano icon here. Sorry. And it'll, that'll bring up our presets where I'm just going to I'm going to select no instrument cuz we don't want a sound to come through on this as we're playing it. Uh we're going to send this MIDI to a different app where that the sound of that app will come through instead of an internal sound. So I'm going to drag that the loop region to a full four bars so I have plenty of time to do my recording and everything. So now that we got that, let's pop back into Audio Bus and I'm going to start with a drum track. And I'm going to use Beatmaker 2. I'm going to use uh, Derek Buddy Meyer's Studio Pop drum kit here. So, do a little bit of setting up. New project. Import sampler. Derek's Studio Pop kit. Alright, so let's click the MIDI on his kit here. And we'll, we'll turn the input channel to MIDI 1. We'll turn this Omni off, and uh, let's click that cog wheel MIDI setup. We'll turn Cubasis on, and we'll turn both of our outputs off. We're also going to turn the clock off, and all these actually can be off. Because uh, if we leave any of these on, it's going to constantly keep uh, searching for any new apps you add, and put this MIDI right through Beatmaker 2 into that app. So obviously we don't want that. We just want to control this as an instrument today, and that's it. <clears throat> so I think I believe we're done with our setup here. So let's go. Uh, let's go back to Cubasis, where uh, you can see it's created an audio track automatically for us that is linked to Beatmaker 2. So uh, we're not going to need this right now. So I'm going to go ahead and select that MIDI track again and uh, unarm the Beatmaker 2 audio track from recording. I'm going to click this arrow here and rename this track actually. You know, MIDI track 1 is fine for now, but once you get into uh, adding a whole bunch more, um, <coughs> excuse me, once you get into adding a whole bunch more tracks in here, um, it'll start to get confusing. So as long as we write, we'll just write what, uh, what it actually is so that there's no confusion in the future. So, um, in the MIDI connection panel here, our inputs we're not going to worry about because we're only going to be sending things out from here. So, in our output slot, we'll just click it till it says Beatmaker 2. And uh, the channel 1 is the channel that we selected for our drums. So, um, as long as we got this MIDI channel selected, we should open our keys and we should be able to hear drums. Right on. So, I'm going to set this up quickly just to how I like to use it. And, um, you know, you're free to, to, to do this however you want, but this is how I like it. I'm going to hide this audio bus panel. Whoops. And just so I have the room. And I'll select the looping function so that this loops. And we're going to keep constantly recording over this until we get what we want. So um, I'll turn my metronome on, check the record mode, count in is on. Um, 
rewind this and we'll click record. Okay, so there we go. As you can see, I recorded over top of this until I got something I liked. And I did do the, the crash a little bit off time on purpose, because now I'm going to show you how we can go in and fix this. You know, some of these uh, some of these hits here are a little bit off, but that's okay, you know. I like to have a little bit of, it shows that a human played it, if it's off a little bit. So let's go and look and see, none of these are... None of them are too bad. Fix this one here a little bit. There we go. And now we'll go and fix that first crash that I uh, I purposely played off time. So there it is. And now we'll just drag it back into place. And now uh, I'm going to actually line up this one too, just so that it sounds correct there. So let's give this a listen. Alright, so we're done with that. So we got our dr our drum track here. So now let's go ahead and uh, and we'll add a synth into this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start by adding uh, my MIDI track and doing the same thing I did last time. And uh, I'll open my audio bus back here and go to audio bus. I'm actually going to use the IMS-20 because I really like the way the IMS-20 reacts when you do live MIDI looping. You can do a lot of neat things that you, you wouldn't normally think of or be able to do on your own. So we'll try this and hope I don't muck it up too much. And I'm just going to check Beatmaker 2 and make sure that it hasn't selected this as a... and it has select it as another output otherwise that drums will go right through here so uh, we can pop back into Cubasis now and as you see it's created the IMS 20 track for us here as well so we'll do the same thing we did last time and unarm that and we'll rename this one to something that makes sense IMS 20 MIDI All right. So in our in our MIDI connection panel here again, we'll just keep selecting until we got IMS20 selected. And channel 1 is what we're going to need to do for IMS20. Uh, channel 2 through 8 are all drum channels, and channel 1 is the synth. So we want the synth here, so that's what we're using. Um, yeah, I think technically we should be ready to go. And we are. So, close out this audio bus panel for now. And I'm just going to give this a play just to make sure it's not sending through. And it sounds all good to me. Alright. So, we got our, our IMS 20 track here. So, let's rec make a little recording. So, we don't have to loop this. We, we, uh, well, actually, yeah, we will. We'll loop this. We don't need the metronome anymore. So, Rewind and record.
so there we got a little weird MIDI synth riff. Not really that great, but you know, it's going to work for what we're doing. So now, uh, now that I got these two things, you know, we could keep going and change our riffs. You know, we can we can take this and copy it. We can go here and paste it, and we can keep going and going and going. But um, today, what we're going to do is uh, we'll actually unarm that. We'll arm both of our audios, and I'm going to rewind this, turn off the looping, and I'm just going to record this audio style. There we go. So now we got our audio. So I'm just going to drag this back so it's the same size as our loop. And I'll put this back. And I'm going to copy this and paste. Oops. I'll undo that. I'm going to do it one track at a time. That seems to work better. Paste. Copy. Paste. So now let's go ahead and get rid of these tracks, these uh, MIDI tracks. So, Beatmaker 2 drums. Where do you? I don't know why I just created that, but I did. And there we go. So now we got a, we got our little, uh, our little audio tracks here that uh, we've recorded. Right on. So, um, as you can see, you could keep going now and, and create uh, an entire song this way, or um, you know, if you you want to record some live singing over top or some guitar, you can always use an audio interface through Cubasis here to do that as well. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much all I wanted to show you guys today. Um, just that it's you know a really great way to make music on the iPad, and uh, you know. Once you got it down, so easy. Um, so, um, yeah, definitely if you have Cubasis, try this out. And uh, I'm pretty sure you'll be pleased with your results. All right. That's it for today. I'll see you guys next time.